Welcome to West Underground, the, the biggest, baddest podcast in the West. Today we have none other than Star Crazy on the couch with us today. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Of course. Yeah, so let's just go around the table here. Um, starting with you, Marcus, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about the band, how you, how you started. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Marcus, I'm the lead vocalist. Uh, I'm Odin, on guitar. I'm um, Jack on the drummer. And I'm uh, Jack on the bass. But we call this Jack JB. Just to keep it simple, oh, okay, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? JB or JD? JB, his last name is Barry. Okay. Or Jables, that yeah. works too. So no, yeah, that's um, confusing. Uh, as far as the band, like me and Odie, this was kind of like a side project yeah, type yeah. thing because we were playing in different bands and we've known each other since we were kids though. Yeah. And um, we just only recently, towards the end of last year, started to kind of take it more seriously. And um, I was kind of proud of the stuff we put together. The little yeah, nice. bunch of, about like five songs together. And then, yeah, we got, I've known JB for a while, just a few mutual bands. And yeah, then yeah. Um, Jack's the youngest member and he joined, he was the last one to join. Um, he was introduced to us through Woody from yeah. Bangs, you guys know. And um, yeah, now we're just like, finally, things are really rolling, which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um, so I just wanted to ask, just a, this bit, a little bit off the cuff kind of question. Is your name really, is your last surname Wolf? Uh, it's my middle name, yeah. Middle, middle name, middle all right. Wolf. That's what they name me. Because I was thinking, if it's Odin Wolf, that has to be the coolest name that I've ever heard in my life. I always say when I introduce him to people, like, they, everyone kind of gets taken aback, like, Odin Wolf. Yeah, I'm yeah. always just like, it's like he was born to be a metal guitarist. There's yeah. no other option. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's so just many free drinks from drunk people at like 2 a.m. at a bar. It's like, yeah. That's not your name. They must be Show like, me already. If it is, I'll buy you a drink. They must be like, oh, so isn't that the Viking thing? Like, yeah. You get a lot of that. Like, yeah. I'm not scared of it at all. I'm very Irish. No. <laughs> you just got a cool dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a sick man. Parents. So, um, so tell us about uh, the, the influences of this band. Like... Um, who were you inspired by when you started this? Or what were you guys uh, listening to? Uh, Mutually, me and Odie, a lot of late 80s kind yeah, of hard yeah, rock 70s, metal. 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, and the first few songs that kind of developed did have that kind of vibe, more of the alternative yeah. hard rock metal from the, like, probably American. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, we've, we're into so much different stuff, and these guys especially, like, we've just got a whole range of influences now, but it's definitely kind of leaning towards the hard rock yeah, yeah. Spectrum. I'm into a lot of glam rock. Yeah, because I, I noticed an aspect of glam rock when I was listening to your music that I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's just, I don't know, Just it just happens. Yeah. We don't really try and go for a specific yeah. thing. We just kind of, it's always come naturally to me and Odie. Yeah, we know nice. each other for so long. So, so you, two, you two guys are the main songwriters of the band, the driving force? Yeah. Keith and Mick, so to speak? Yeah, but JB's in another band called Lucid Hoops. Yeah, yeah. And, um, he writes music, his brother's a guitarist and he's in that band and they write music together. And um, Jack has actually like contributed to like one of the songs on the EP, so it's like... I think everybody I, in the band contributes. Like, yeah. Most of our songs generally start between the two of us and we take it to the rest of the band and then... Yeah. They all have yeah. their parts and even change parts. And, um, so you guys come up with the... The final product at the end of the thing is very different to what we would start off yeah, with. Like, yeah. I think everyone has a part. So you kind of yeah. you kind of put together a skeleton and then bring it to the band and Pretty put much. everything to... Most songs either start with lyrics or riffs or whatever. And then yeah, yeah. Just grows from there to... Yeah, nice. So. Do you start with lyrics per se or do you start with melodies? Um, oh, it's different every time. I mean... Yeah. If Odin has an idea which is more of a hit, you know more of an Odin song, it's yeah. as easy as him just kind of working out the structure and having riffs or whatever, and then I will listen to it, you know, when I'm doing mundane tasks yeah, and yeah, try yeah. and think of melodies. Often pop up easily for me, which is good because I'm a drummer yeah. um, by trade, but like so I've never learned a melodic instrument, but I think I have somewhat of a knack for like writing melodies, and then the lyrics are actually usually last, yeah, me, yeah, at least. Oh man, no. yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird how drummers often make you know uh, good songwriters. Yeah, well, I hope yeah, so. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, uh, a few people have mentioned that since I I've become a singer. They're like, oh, I think you know drummers make good singers. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> we were having this discussion with the band last week, um, just about how many you know how many dr how many um, drummers are, are good singers and how many singers are surprisingly have really 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 good rhythm. Or naturally in okay. sync with, yep. you know. Yeah. Well, Steven Tyler started as a drummer. He was yeah. in like a 60s band with a haircut kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, that's why he's. I've heard he was always giving shit to Joey Kramer. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, I'm originally a drummer, so. But I'm not like that with Jack, am I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sometime. Nah, no, it's all good. Yeah. Mm. So, so yeah. I may have revealed a little secret um, to the to the boys before we started about uh, about Blake giving us a little bit of a tip off to you guys. So I just wanted to uh, you know maybe ask about that relationship. Shout out to Blake. Yeah, yeah Blake. Blake Terrace. He's well, me and Odie went to high school with him. Yeah, we had our first band together right, all through high school pretty much. We met him um, in like when he in year seven I guess. So pretty much yeah, our yeah. entire high school lives. Um, yeah, we all just kinda had our first band together and grew up cutting our teeth, you know, Sydney pubs and band comps, anywhere that have an underage band play. Yeah, yeah. So we were old enough to go on tour and that when we were all 18. So I did that for a bit. But yeah, yeah, it's always been a good friend of ours. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So what's the plans for the future, boys? Uh, where, are we, where are you taking the band? Um, we've kind of got like, now that we've got, we've recorded an EP yeah, yeah. and we're kind of gearing towards how we're going to release that. And um, obviously with COVID, it's kind of like we're not really thinking about gigging yet until. Yeah. So the EP probably won't come out till next year, but we'll have, we're going to release we'll drop a video some singles in a first. Single. Yeah. I'll lead up to it. In a sense, was COVID kind of good for you guys in the sense that you could kind of now just go, oh, all right, we'll just focus on making music? Yeah, well, you know, we did our first gig just before COVID happened mm. in March. Yeah. Like, it was the March... No, it was the oh, sorry, no, it was on the 20th February, of February. February, it was February, yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, and then, so by the time we did our second gig, which was only, like, last week, yeah, yeah. we had, like, a whole set of new songs. So yeah. it actually, I think it was a great thing for us because, you know, we were in our infancy when we did our first gig as yeah. a band, and now... We just like mile, like miles better. Yeah, miles yeah. better. In that time, like we spent all that, yeah, all that time basically uh, focusing on the recordings, the six songs we recorded for the EP. Six, six best songs, yeah. And um, obviously going into the studio and coming out of it, you really get to know those songs, like yeah, the back of your hand. So when we came back to play these songs, we were a lot more, I think, prepared. I think we played a lot more tighter than mm. than we would have. I think so we're I all think it's much more thing. familiar with the songs. Yeah, so how was the how was the gig at Frankie's the other day compared to the first gig? Uh, different. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> everyone yeah, was sitting yeah. down. The thing is, everyone was seated, but you know, everyone was paying attention at least. Yeah. So we got a good response, so we're just like, oh, if anyone wanted to get up and leave, we would have yeah. seen them and stirred them. So no. Well, I saw you guys on about six <laughs> people, you know, six different stories. Um, I saw I saw the guys from Wicked Things give you a bit of a. Oh, like, like on a Instagram. Show. Yeah, on Instagram. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I love it. Who's that? Sorry. Uh, I saw I saw the guys from Wicked Things. Put oh you yeah, up yeah. On their stories as well. well. We hit it off with them immediately. Yeah. Yeah. They they just kind of like remind. We, our, me and Owen's first band with Blake was very Wicked Things. Yeah, yeah. It maybe still like is. Bass, like, guitar, shredding. Though. Just like very Van Halen. And, um, <laughs> yeah. We love what they're about. Yeah. And we saw them play. Yeah. yeah, nice. Um, yeah, they seem to do have a bit of a Van Halen influence, which I think yeah. they're embracing, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Van Halen fans. So how long did it take you boys to construct uh, the, the, the single that's out on Spotify at the moment? Um... Both, I mean, those, yeah. both yeah. those songs were recorded at the same time. Um, I think they were both like sort of ideas Marcus had when we were starting the band. So yeah, they're really, yeah. to be honest, they were kind of like, I've just had them kicking around for a while. Because yeah. I was drumming in a band and I wasn't really bringing it to that band. And then when um, we just got together with Odie because we live nearby still. Yeah. And um, just, yeah, you know, I just went, let's, I want, both of us just wanted to take it a little more seriously. And then, but you know, even since then with the, the EP, we've just mm. created better songs yeah so yeah nice I yeah I actually don't these guys disagree but like I <laughs> sometimes don't like playing the those songs live I feel like yeah. they're not up to the same standard I think the new songs we have now are the first we've written as a full four piece band with everyone on board so it's oh, very nice. much more representative of what Star yeah. Crazy yeah. and they were kind of they were almost like demos when we recorded yeah, they were literally demos we Marcus played drums on them and, um, yeah super <laughs> cheaply so yeah Jack not that we're not proud of them I think they're great everyone loves them yeah yeah but once released these new ones and so I think that. it's just the next step up yeah, or well, even nice. the first step of Stuff Crazy. Oh, I think. Excited. There's my beer. Oh, there it is. It's <laughs> hiding around there somewhere. I just wanted to ask for the for the people just tuning in now. Like, um, so you were just talking about doing some recording. So, how many how many tracks have you? Can you say how many tracks you've uh, recorded for this coming EP? Ah, uh, we did six tracks, yeah. and we nice. recorded it over three days, and then got it mixed separately. So. Um, just kind of like put a little more money into it and given it the treatment it deserves. Yeah. These songs are just, we'll be so happy with the result. Yeah. Which and studio did you go to? Um, Damon Gerard's studios. 
It's, um, used to be based in Balmain, yeah, yeah. so me and Marcus have worked there before in the old location, but um, they've recently moved to West Gosford. Yeah. Uh, sort of a bigger studio and it's closer to the owner's home and that, so it's Which more, is Central Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah West yeah, Gosford. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we hooked up a weekend up there, just got a cheap motel for the weekend. Yeah. Brought, brought our mate Mo Mayhem uh, yeah. to produce. Who, um, got done a great job, got really involved yeah. in the recording process. And mm. As a guitarist, he's a guitarist as, as well. Yeah. So he really sat down with me a lot, brought along a massive library of guitars to play with yeah, all throughout nice. the EP, different amps and then. Did you use too many different, did you use a lot of different gear on the EP? Oh yeah, I, I used my own gear obviously for just yeah. about all of it, but then he would just be like, oh, this this song or this verse sounds like yeah. it needs it needs a Les Paul Jr. or it needs a 135 or a Gretsch Super Jet or whatever. So, and he would just hand me guitars, like yeah. after every take, so, oh, so his guitars are <laughs> worth like three times as much as mine is. Yeah. It would often help. Yeah. With, yeah, it was amazing. It would often help with like a solo. Like, he yeah. Just, he could hear a specific, oh, that solo would sound good on this guitar. I'm sure other bands do the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. just, you may as well, if you're going into a studio for three days, you may as well just have all the equipment yeah. that you can to mm. to use. Even the studio themselves had a wall of guitars, of like, like, like Fender, Strat, and Telly, and Gibson, SG, Les Paul, all the, all the classic ones. Yeah. But yeah, there was one bit in one of our songs where the guy was like, it sounds like it needs a fender. Yeah, there's yeah. one up there, so we got that. <laughs> hanging on the wall, yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. And, uh, so yeah, yeah, I had a lot of a lot of toys to play with. Yeah, so did you do it live, or did you, did you do it uh, on Pro Tools and Logic? Uh, yeah, we've done it on Pro Tools. Now, we recorded the drums and bass at the yeah. same time. Oh, the drums, bass, and guitar. And then obviously um, fixed up any little things. And I think, yeah, the guitars were scrapped. And then, but yeah. we recorded the, the band live, basically playing live. With Marcus in the control room, turn vocals. Yeah, you know, we I've known D Damien Gerard, the people that run it, known it for years, and I'm always recommending it to whatever you know other bands and ourselves because the drum sound is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New Especially the new studio, massive room. <laughs> yeah, so the new studio is even better. So um, yeah, yeah. So Damien Gerard, of Central Coast. I can't say enough good things about him. Mm. They're just like great dudes and um, professional and just. It used to be a TV studio, the new one, so yeah, they got yeah. all this space to work with now. Oh, wow. They're getting even more clients, so it, it, the move was good for them, because they used yeah. to be in Balmain in the inner west. But yeah, we had a ball. Mm, we're happy with the result. Yeah, nice. Was but it stressful, though, trying to get six songs down over the over that three-day period? Uh, what would you say? How many hours were you in there each day, roughly? Mm, it, was like, it was like 10 to 10, basically, 12 hours. Or 10 to 9. Yeah, around the whole day. Just in there. Yeah. Yeah. Three days. Wow. Um, I mean, you know, the, the accommodation was walking distance, so that's that oh. was the whole idea. It's like, yeah. just wrap up and start when, when it suits the engine. Crum, crummy drive-in motel, across the road from RSL. But we were recording <laughs> right to the last minute. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like the perfect amount of time to record these songs. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Not, a, not quite a full-length album, but... It wasn't rushed, but yeah, we definitely used every last... Second. Second yeah. we could, that'd be paid for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the results, what you guys wanted when you went in? Oh, yeah, perfect. Um, we're waiting on the masters currently, but we ticked off like the final mixes. And yeah. Already, they're sounding huge. Yeah. Some of my favorite stuff I've ever done, so I can't wait to get them out. But oh, that's great. Yeah. It's so strange to me because I've just been, uh, you know, I, when you do a bit of reading and you talk to different bands, you hear that, you know, when they when they first started or whatnot, they seem to be able to go into the studio and put these songs together quite quickly and record you know, EPs or albums over several days, but the you know, as bands seem to progress, it takes months and weeks, and mm. so like the longer the process to put these things together, which I've, I've just been yeah. wondering. Yeah. yeah, what's your take on that? Yeah, well, it kind of, it makes sense because... Depends on the way you want to go about it. You mm. could spend weeks and weeks on one song, and but you know, you pick of, every little note. One of the best tape. albums that have come out yeah. recently have recorded in home studios, like yeah. that dude from Tame Impala. There's yeah. no right or wrong way to go about it, but I think if, you want a certain quality. If you want to kind of knock your last EP out, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if you've got an expectation where this band sounds this good and the next record's got to sound better, adds yeah, good yeah. or better, it's like Airborne. We were listening to it at Frankie's the other night and um, there was this, a song on the new album that just didn't kind of like hit you, like you're yeah. expecting with that band. So there's like a level of expectation of, of the quality of whatever yeah. you call it, the production. And so that's why I think maybe bands as they progress they just feel like they need to take it up another, another level. It's, it makes sense. So. Yeah. So for us, yeah, our first recordings that are on Spotify were just at uh, the most the cheapest option we could. Yeah. Did the entire this, thing in one day. Did five songs in one day. Released two of them. Wow. Just just as a demo more than anything. Yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah, it served its purpose. Like we put it out just to say, hey, we're Star Crazy, new band. 
Yeah, no. Marcus played drums on the recording. We didn't have Jack yet, so we used those recordings to send him in to learn. Yeah. So. Doing a bit of research on you guys, it, it, I realized I realized how kind of new you were, because I saw you I saw you when we were you know playing with the Rockefellers. I kind of saw you guys pop up, but then I, then I saw you guys you know in the last week playing Frankie's Pizza, and I was, I was kind of wondering how you guys did that, because I was thinking, oh my God, these these guys are the fastest you know up and coming band in Sydney. Yeah, uh, well. I mean, Jordan from Frankie's just, he's kind of has his ear to the ground. Yeah, and he yeah. knows, we've known him for years, so he was just kind enough to hit us up for this spot. And yeah. um, I think before lockdown, I, um, after our first show, we had one coming up at Frankie's, which unfortunately got cancelled. But um, as soon as they started booking bands again in August, like, he hit us up immediately. To, yeah, so I'd like to think it's just because we kick ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's always good. Shout out to Frankie's, by the way. Yeah. Um, and also another question, guys. What are what are some venues in Sydney you want to play at in the you know, in the future? And more theatre. And more theatre. I think yeah. you know. Ace Arena. Ace Arena. Why not go ANZ? What's it called now? They change the name like every year. Was oh, it's Sydney Superdome. Kudos, is it? Kudos yeah. Banker. That's what it is now. Kudos Banker. Are oh, you talking about like what used to be Ace Arena? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Kudos before Banker. that, it was a Sydney Superdome. Mm. Yeah, there. Yeah, we'd like to play there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, on, a, on a smaller scale. I've always always wanted to play the Metro or the Enmore. The Factory. Yeah. yeah. Some of my favorite gigs have been Enmore just because. Uh, yeah, I've just seen all my favorite bands there. I've always wanted to be on that stage. Yeah. I think it's an achievable. Well, goal. I think that's achievable for us. Yeah. So it's kind of like you know what I mean. You set yeah. goals and like I think we could play the Enmore Theater in the next couple of years. I think. Yeah. We're on the same trajectory. Let's yeah, hope. <laughs> no, no you drug addiction, all right. <laughs> 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 well, I feel like I feel like the Enmore, the Enmore Theatre is kind of like the place to play if you're a Sydney band and you're up and coming. Why, once you hit the Enmore Theatre, that's when you know the ball starts really rolling for well, you. We even even on terms of being just an opening spot, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's just, it's just a goal. Spot. I just would love to play there. Yeah, day. yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> what about? Uh, do you have any? Do you have any tours that you want to do in maybe in the future? Like go outside as Sydney as soon as we can. Yeah. 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 I uh, have a bunch of friends in Melbourne and Brisbane and that would love to see us. Uh, yeah. We had that planned as well before um, lockdown ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, as soon as yeah, as soon as the borders open up and it's safe to step foot in Melbourne again, we'll yeah, yeah. look after So play. guys, I feel like I'm leaving the other two boys out. Uh, um, so who are your favourite drummers? My favourite drummers? Um, I love Neil Peart from Rush. Like yeah. I listen to Rush all the time. Like Limelight, Tom Sawyer. I, Limelight's one of my favourite songs of all time. Yeah. Just yeah. listening to that. And they like I love how they do like constant time signature changes and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just it's just awesome listening to him and how he just has this ability to just do it completely like perfectly. He's completely smooth. It's it's kind of amazing. It, it's awesome like to do stuff like what he can do. And he like he mostly writes like all their songs kind of not all of them I but bet like, he writes their lyrics yeah like yeah. lyrics and like it's just it's really amazing like what he can do you can tell the difference yeah. between like the first album and every other one since yeah. they had a different drummer in the first album he seems like Very. a like a bit of like a super technical kind of drummer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. all of them no classically well, trained thing is that the word? I don't know man like they were pretty yeah, rock and roll classically you know what I mean but yeah, yeah. very good technically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say no no yeah very talented man yeah, he's a crazy drummer, so yeah. pretty yeah. awesome. So what do you think of Ringo? Ringo? <laughs> <laughs> Big, I like him. I think yeah, he's good. Yeah. He, he plays for the music, and yeah, I think yeah. that's the best thing you can do as a drummer. So, yeah. Yeah, I think he's great. So if you were on stage somewhere at a big arena, Ace Arena, uh, what's it called now, did you say? The Kudos, Kudos, Kudos Bank Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what would your ideal drum kit be? Would you have three, uh, three uh, kick drums? or would you Three have kick drums? Oh, God. It's a, a bit overkill in my opinion. Like, yeah, yeah. If you can do it, it's awesome. But um, just a round of guns. You need another leg, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you, you can use two. <laughs> <laughs> we we have our ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, what's your stick size? Oh, to ask me to dinner first, alright? <laughs> all right, all right. So stick around, guys, on West Underground, and uh, we'll have the Star Crazy Only Fans at the end. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe who's. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Uh, JB, uh, what's yes. your uh, what's your favorite bass player? Oh, well, I have a few, you know, for different reasons. I love um, bassists like uh, Nate Mendel from uh, Foo Fighters and Chris Joni from Silverchair purely because you know they just 
they just do a really good job of um, keeping rhythm and reinforcing the harmony and the melody. I really love the sort of um, little bass lines that Nate Mendel does in like Foo Fighter songs like, I don't know, All My Life and Wasting Light and stuff like that. And um, when it comes to more technical playing, I'm more a fan of uh, people like um, Chris, um, Chris Johnny, um, more like uh, Jacob Pistorius, um, yeah. because um, he has just such amazing left hand technique and he can just. Um, uh, he has very powerful fingers. Oh, yeah, and he also, like, one thing I notice about him is that he's really consistently in rhythm as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, even just the isolated bass alone, he's just crazy in rhythm. Um, John Deacon is another one, awesome. you know, he was the one who got me into the idea of playing bass because I noticed on a music video of Bohemian Rhapsody on video hits, mm. I heard some low bass notes behind the, behind the piano, I was like, what's that? And it turns out it was the bass, so I was like, ooh, yeah, I've got to play bass now. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just, just bassists like that. I mean, Paul Gray from yeah. Slipknot was another big one for me. I spent the entirety of high school just learning Slipknot songs, yeah. so, um, yeah. Stuff like oh, that. Very nice. Why do, why do bass players seem to have a prejudice against the pick? Uh, sorry, what was that? Why, I said, why do bass players seem to have a, like a prejudice against playing with a pick? Oh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, Paul Gray and Chris Joni and Nate Mendel don't really... They, they, they play with pick, but I think, I don't know, maybe some stuff is easier to play with fingers than it is on pick. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, they just see... I don't know. I, I, maybe I went through a phase where I felt like I was a pussy for playing with a pick. Yeah, you so know. are you a finger man or a pick man? I, thought I, do, I do both, to be honest. You, you I mean, both, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, there are certain songs where I like to play with pick, you know, that I think it would suit it. Yeah. Like, because there's a different sound you get from playing with pick than there is with a, you, that, that there is with a, from the sound of playing with fingers. And sometimes one suits the song better than the other. Like, for instance, um, your time is now. I played with a pick because I just I just felt like it suited it better. Mm. But we have also a couple songs where I play with fingers, so it really it really depends, you know. Um, I don't think I've ever read a, I, I don't think I've ever read a, read a report of a bass player going on a full on rant saying picks up for pussies. No, but it kind of feels that way sometimes. Like it, mm. it, it definitely it definitely feels that as a guitar player, I've noticed that a lot of bass players seem to have a bit of a prejudice here and there for the against the pick. Don't know why. Yeah, neither do I, to be honest. I mean, it's all about the sound. It's all about, mm. it's all about the sound. I mean, I don't know. I just don't. I don't think I like the sound of Chris Novoselic's bass playing if his if he was playing with fingers rather than with a pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, if it uh, it makes you feel better, I don't play with picks. So. <laughs> <laughs> you play with something far worse. You play with drumsticks. <laughs> All right, that's enough about fingers and sticks. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so for the, all the younger musicians out there that are listening, uh, what advice would you boys have for young musicians? I suppose keep out of our way. <laughs> <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> uh, I think that's what uh, Liam Gallagher said once. Sorry, so it's really funny. Um, keep it out of my way. You know what I mean. I'll give you a slap on the face. I just I'd say get Shout out to Liam over the by just, oh, just behind you. Hey Liam, uh, there he is. <laughs> Staring down at you with a caterpillar. You do brow. Yeah, yeah. I actually feel way more confident because I've got a slight mono brow, but ever yeah, since yeah. he's su super handsome, right? So I'm like, it made me feel better about it. You know what I mean? If he's mono brow, anyone can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Validation. Yeah, but yeah. um, I would actually say, dude, you look like you sh you you should be in a Britpop band. Yeah. yeah. You have you have a bit of that that yeah, look. Yeah, I just thought I don't know. Some Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing I think like, well, we, the music we do is kind of like and the way I sing is definitely more American sounding mm. so I just thought look British sound American yeah <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we'll just we'll just we'll just hold the musician's question just a quick one for you Blur or Blur or Oasis Oasis, Oasis. absolutely mm. good so, totally if anybody yeah, said exactly Blur we'd be like out now <laughs> <laughs> no, Oasis is great yeah yeah so what advice would you have, Odin, for young musicians, I suppose? Uh, I had something. I, <laughs> I would go. say, um, stick, don't, like, don't waste your time trying to find the yeah. sound, you know, like that Mighty Boosh episode. The sound. Just, well, the sound comes from you. I can't speak for anyone else, but I love rock and roll, and I think <laughs> as corny as it sounds, rock and roll is always going to be where yeah. it's at, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, it's just really where it's at, man. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, just stick to what you're good at and don't bother trying to 
do it for yourself and do it for whatever reason you wanted to do it in the first place. Yeah. You know? If it's real, people will like it. Yeah, that's it. Just be. People pick up on authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it is hard yeah, nowadays because everyone's <laughs> trying to create an image and like get with social media and yeah, you know, fit into these certain boxes. But I don't know. I just I haven't got the time. I just want to play rock and roll. Well, that's it. That's what West Underground's all about. Rock and roll. That's yeah. We are at the moment, you know, the the only rock and roll podcast. Hope it stays that way for now. <laughs> and. Um, the, uh, Mr. Drummer, uh, what, Jacob, what, Jack. uh, Jack. Jack. Jacob. Oh, no, I don't know. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> too many young Henrys. Too course. many young Henrys. <laughs> want another one? God damn young Henrys. Uh, what advice would you have for young drummers? Advice? Um, it's super generic, but just practice, you know, like, yeah. I like, um, I see so many young drummers that, um, play and stuff and they just focus too much on, like, Stuff like, oh, I want to master this fill and like all these like little things that like, oh, I saw this drummer do this like really cool thing. And then they, they still haven't really mastered like basic stuff. And it's, I just say just practice, you know, like yeah. even the basics. Because once you get stuff like that down, like it opens a heap of possibilities up for you. Yeah. So it's, it's basic, but it's, it's worthwhile. So. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice. Good answer, yeah. Yeah. He's the intelligent one. Mm -hmm. Hey, JB. Uh, <laughs> I've got... I've got Three bits of advice. I'm, I'm going to reinforce Shit. his because practice is important. Two is sort of, I guess, loosely based on. Well, it's sort of a synonym of it. If you've got, if you've got, if you're a band that's got a weird sound, keep being weird. And advice number three: if you haven't got a bass player, quit. Thank you guys for being joking about that. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. I'm going to have to. Really. Thank you. Thank you so uh, thank much. Thank you. And that's West Underground. Thank you very much.